Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Alex Lombroso, San Diego real estate broker with Light Residential. And first of all, I'm happy to be back on the camera. Um, it's been a while, I've been absent for a couple months now and uh, it hasn't been in vain. I've been super busy and I know that people throw that term around a lot, but the truth is that uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on here, thankfully. Uh, business has been great, despite what you may be hearing about the real estate market slowing or uh, that we are about to experience an inevitable crash. Um, I would like to discuss why I think that that is not the case. Um, and also, I've been working on some uh, other exciting projects that are not real estate related. Uh, for those of you that actually care in due time, I will share those with you and um, you know, go through other details because uh, anything business related is uh, always a really exciting topic for me. So um, anyway, what I want to do right now is just do a very uh, casual market update uh, based on my experience, let you know what I feel is going on with the market right now. There's a lot of speculation. Um, there's a lot of negative news that is uh, you know, going around. And some people uh, seem to think that we're back on thin ice and that this whole bubble is about to burst again. So um, I want to you know, present some information that I think could uh, possibly oppose those thoughts. And uh, it's, it's really simple. I mean, um, what, what I've been seeing on my end is that, yes, prices are back at their all-time highs. Um, what's not helping is interest rates. Interest rates are also extremely high. Um, you, you know, without getting too technical and getting into the data and all the boring stuff, um, I want to talk about why I think rates will continue to be high at least for the next year, but then will drop again. Um, and, and really, it's just um, a, a matter of uh, the fact that you know, right now the, the stock market has kind of been on a good run, and so there's an inverse relationship, right? When stocks do well, then you know people put their money there, and so rates tend to uh, increase a little bit. Um, and so that, that's kind of what we're uh, going through right now. But nonetheless, they're still historically low uh, if you compare them to like the last 25, 30 years. And um, you know, the most important part is you always want to ask yourself if you're looking to buy or to sell why it is that you want to buy yourself, right? Um, that's all that matters. At the end of the day, all that market speculation um, is not that important, to be honest with you. What really matters is what your current situation is. So I want to talk about that uh, for a little bit. I want to talk about um, you know, what kind of buyers are out there right now. What kind of buyers uh, should still be focusing on you know, getting into a piece of property? Um, what kind of sellers should still be uh, you know, uh, focusing on wanting to sell? Um, and then uh, you know, see what you guys think about all this information. Okay, so before we talk about who's buying and who's selling currently, let's talk about prices and let's talk about why I feel the market is not all doom and gloom at the moment, even though prices are high and some people um, are obviously getting a bit discouraged with higher rates and pricing and all that stuff. Um, look, this stuff goes on, it's cyclical, and uh, yes, we are uh, at the effective end of uh, our real estate cycle, um, but that doesn't mean that you know the market's gonna crash. So first of all, let me just uh, kind of do a quick reference to the last time we had that big bubble bust, right? Or the, um, the Great Recession, uh, as uh, you know, the, the government dubbed it. And the reason why was because there was a lot of loans that were being made that should not have been made, right? Lenders had access to humongous pools of money and they needed to basically uh, loosen up their lending conditions so that they could lend that money out. You know, I mean, they're promising investors a certain rate of return and with that money sitting in a bank account, they can't do that. So um, how do you do that? Well, you start coming up with more creative financing scenarios such as, you know, stated income, stated assets. Um, if you have extremely high FICO scores, then basically no questions asked. We kind of take your word for whatever income you're declaring and that's that. So that's, that's kind of what happened. That's why we started getting into um, you know, some real deep water. And eventually it got to the point where people were getting, you know, second, third and fourth uh, homes that could not afford it. And then, you know, the job market did its thing. People started losing their jobs and that's why they started defaulting on their mortgages. Now that's not going on right now, which for me is a very encouraging sign. Um, keep in mind, I am also a licensed mortgage loan originator and, um, you know, we do a lot of loans here. So uh, what I see is that if anything, banks are still sticking to their you know, book of guidelines. They're, they're very stringent when it comes to lending. They are not just giving money away. Um, there are lenders out there that are kind of niche lenders that do give those stated income loans, um, but that's what they specialize in and they still want to see that you have reserves in your bank account. And, and, you know, they do take the necessary steps to properly vet 
borrowers that apply for that kind of financing. So it's very different to what happened uh, in 2008, nine and 10. Okay, so let's fast forward to the third quarter or the fourth quarter now of 2018 and um, you know, kind of take a quick glimpse into how we got here. Basically, um, you know, prices tanked, market got crazy. Um, we got used to uh, houses moving very quickly and um, slowly but surely prices started increasing and recovering. And now we're at the point where, you know, we've been used to a very fast paced market for almost the last 10 years. Um, however, inventory is a bit scarce and prices are high again. So people, uh, sellers in particular, are starting to freak out because now instead of selling their home in 30 days and ultimately having the freedom of pricing it higher than any recent comparable in their neighborhood, um, now they're actually having to strategically price their home. You know, they, they need to really assess what makes their home unique and different um, in, in either a better or a lesser fashion to the homes that have sold um, and get some strategy involved with that. And uh, the sellers that aren't doing that, well, what you're seeing is, um, you know, they're ultimately listing their homes for a much higher price than what buyers now are willing to pay. Taken into consideration, rates have gone up, eating up part of their purchase power, and already prices, you know, being high. So buyers are getting discouraged, and they're basically getting to the point where they're saying, no, I will not pay what you're asking for. So um, some of those homes that aren't priced correctly are sitting for 90 days, 120 days, sometimes, you know, a little bit longer than that, and, um, you know, they're having to uh, correct the price reduce the price to what it really should be at. Now that doesn't actually indicate that, um, you know, we're, we're experiencing a price correction or an adjustment. That just means they priced it too high to begin with. Okay, and so uh, there's no longer an upward trend every time somebody lists their home. Okay, so people gotta actually put some thought into how they're pricing their homes nowadays uh, because buyers are pretty much walking away and saying, I'm not even gonna step into your house and risk falling in love with it because I'd rather just move on to the next one or wait. If you're a buyer right now and you're either sitting on the fence or you're in need uh, of pulling the trigger but are hesitant because of what you're hearing, because of what you're seeing, uh, because of the numbers you're being quoted, well, let me offer you a little bit of perspective on you know, what kind of conclusion you should make and why you should make that conclusion. Um, first of all, there's a couple of questions you want to ask yourself, and that's why do you want to buy a property? Um, in, doing, in doing so, you, you want to look at, kind of reflect what your current situation is, right? So number one, um, are you single? Um, what age group are you in? What kind of job do you hold? Is it a pretty strong permanent job? Um, is it something that you, know, you might uh, uh, be changing uh, for another job or profession in the next year or two? Um, do you have a family? Do you have kids? Um, if you do, then most likely you're kind of sitting on the fence on wanting to buy, but maybe you can't afford it, or maybe you, know, you just feel like it's not the right move to make at the moment. So again, ask yourself, what kind of situation are you in? And let me tell you why that, that's important, because for example, um, I was speaking to a client the other day that uh, says, you know what, um, I've never actually owned a home uh, in my life, okay? Now we're talking about an experienced and a savvy real estate investor. Um, this person is 46 years of age and they basically, um, every time they get to the point where they save up about $100,000, $150,000, um, they buy, they invest in commercial real estate and buy commercial real estate, okay? But here's the key thing about this person's lifestyle. This person is single, this person doesn't have any kids and um, likes to travel a lot, so doesn't really want to be permanently fixed to one spot. If you have a family, if you have a very stable job and um, you're renting and maybe you've got a 30 or a 60 day notice because sellers are you know, uh, trying to tap into the, the seller's market and take advantage of the fact that they could cash in ultimately, then maybe you're tired of moving from rental to rental every 12 months or every 24 months. So that right there might be a good reason why you might want to actually purchase a property. Um, and, and again, I mean, you know, only you can assess your situation. Um, but if you're looking to buy real estate just because you're looking for uh, a quick profit, a flip, because, you know, there's people out there that say, oh, I made a ton of money in equity when I purchased and, and sold, um, you know, that is a, a cyclical investment activity. And right now, if you're looking for a short term profit, it's not the time. So I'll just be honest with you uh, right up front. It's not the time for a short-term real estate investment unless you're looking, you're getting a killer deal on something, um, or uh, you know, uh, you know, 
you're an experienced flipper. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that um, you know you're thinking long term if you're looking to buy a primary residence, okay, and take advantage of all those tax write-offs as opposed to renting, where you don't get any write-off except maybe like your partial office use in the rental. You can write that off, but you can also do that uh, if you have a mortgage and you own, and um, you know you can write off property taxes. You can write off your mortgage uh, interest and insurance that you pay on the home. So there's a lot of big benefits. And of course, again, if you're positioning yourself long term, then most likely based on history, you will gain equity. Um, and, and again, you know, it's your house and uh, you don't have to move every time, you know, you get a notice from your tenants. So uh, ask yourself the right questions and um, assess the situation as to, you know, whether buying is the right thing for you or not. All right, so now that you know a little bit of what's going on and um, what position or perspective you should have, uh, depending on what your situation is, um, t take one thing, if anything, from this video. Don't panic uh, just because in mainstream media, you know, there's a lot of uh, reporting out there that, you know, the bubble could burst, that, you know, um, prices are again at an all-time high, that rates are super high, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that is not necessarily uh, uh, the correct speculation. Um, I'm actually seeing a relatively healthy market. Um, we're staying busy and, um, you know, inventory is still relatively scarce. Um, and uh, demand is still a little bit higher than uh, what the inventory can uh, truthfully satisfy. So at the end of the day, as long as we don't start seeing any funny money being lent um, or things of that nature, I think that um, whatever correction we are due for is going to be just an organic correction. Um, I don't want to start quoting percentages and, and how much prices might uh, drop because at the end of the day, you know, uh, we really never know. I mean, look, um, I'm a veteran in the real estate industry for 13 years and counting. Um, and I've seen a lot of scenarios in those 13 years. I've tried to predict, I've kind of given up on it. What I, what I like to really uh, work off of is, um, you know, the current feedback and uh, how the situations that I'm currently in with my clients tend to play out. Um, and the communication I have with lenders, of course, right? Because they're a huge part of uh, the real estate economy. At the end of the day, don't panic, guys. You know, just hang in there, um, assess your situation. Um, look, at the end of the day, rents are high. If you need to buy, you know, then you lose nothing in getting in touch with me, getting a consultation, seeing what the numbers are, and uh, making a decision based on that. Maybe you can get into a rental that is more affordable, um, and you're okay running the risk of having to vacate in 12 months, um, uh, you know, or, or maybe at the end of the day, you're tired of that and you wanna actually buy. Um, just know that long-term hold right now is the play, and um, yeah, for whatever you guys need, feel free to reach out to me always, you know. Um, uh, I'm always very straightforward in the kind of advice that I want to give my clients. Um, it's not about getting you into a house today. It's about really, you know, doing uh, what's best for you. And I'm not afraid to tell you, hey, listen, I don't think you should buy right now. You know, maybe you should hold off for another year and, uh, you know, do some more adequate planning. Uh, so again, that's what you should expect from me. And um, at the end of the day, I'm here for whatever you guys need. Reach out to me via email or, uh, you know, just give me a call and we'll chat. Take care, guys. We'll be in touch soon. And I uh, hope you guys have an amazing close to uh, the fourth quarter of the year. And I'll see you soon before the year ends. Take care. Guys.